Hello everybody, since everybody asked for a video on risk management in a bank, I thought of taking a detour from the common topics that I normally upload videos on like fund accounting or trade life cycle and decided to tackle the problems of risk management in a bank. This introductory video is just like an overview, an eagle's view of you know how an eagle surveys the entire uh, spectrum of uh, the scenery and nature etc. Similarly, we're just going to take a look at what are the different aspects of risks in a bank. A bank is a financial institution that accepts deposits and gives loans to people, corporates, etc. By the very nature of its business, it is exposed to risk. So what is risk? Risk is basically like a possibility of incurring a financial loss. But in the context of a bank, the financial loss has a trickle-down effect. So if the borrower fails, the bank fails, the depositors fail, etc. So this trickle-down effect has to be contained and therefore a lot of time, energy and effort has been you know, spent on understanding the different aspects of risk management in a bank. The first kind of risk that the bank is exposed to simply because of the nature of its activities is credit risk. We're going to take a look at that. The second is market risk. The third is operational risk and the fourth, a new uh, venture, a new baby added to the risk management <laughs> uh, prime, if I may say so, is liquidity risk. Okay, so let's take a look at each one of them as usual. Like in all my videos, I'm going to be having some examples of how these things work out and they pan out. As I mentioned, this is just going to be like an introductory video. There is not going to be much of calculations there's not going to be much of best practices discussed and so on because those are much larger topics for which guidance has been given by BIS that's the bank for international settlements through the Basel 3 and Basel 3.4 norms credit risk is of two types the first type is borrower default in finance in banking the term credit is uh, another term that's used for lending Okay, so the risk that the borrower is unable to service the loan, the borrower defaults on the loan is called as a credit risk. The credit risk is the inability to pay the interest by the borrower and or the borrower's inability to repay the principal back on maturity. So let's take an example of how this works out. Hari Bank has let's say lent USD 100 million to KH Inc, which is a corporate. The two parties, that's the lender and the borrower, have signed what is called as a loan agreement, which gives out clearly what are the rules and regulations surrounding the loan. These are called as covenants or the terms and conditions of the loan. So as per the terms and conditions of the loan, KH Inc has to pay interest on predetermined intervals to Hari Bank and it must also repay the principal on maturity. So the terms of interest, the dates of interest payment, the date of maturity, everything is clearly mentioned in that loan agreement or in case it's a bond subscription, it's called as an indenture. If KH Inc. fails to make timely interest payments on the due date, then Hari Bank will incur a loss of income, right? There will be an, a loss of income because interest income is the number one income, is the, is, is the leading income indicator for a bank. The bank earns most of its income through interest on loans that are disbursed. So if KH Inc. as a borrower does not make that interest payment, then Hari Bank will definitely be suffering a loss of income. So the revenues of the bank will fall because of KH Inc's inability to make timely interest payment. If on the other hand, KH Inc fails to repay the loan on maturity, then Hari Bank will suffer an asset deterioration. In this case, the size of the asset reduces to the extent that KH Inc has not been able to pay and this is called as bad debts. The balance sheet of the bank will reduced to that extent because the asset size of the bank has reduced. 
This is an example of a borrower default. Is the probability therefore that the borrower may default either on interest payments or on principal repayments thereby incurring a loss to the lender. We nowadays have significant amounts of tools, software and processes to minimize the credit risk. Another video will be uploaded on credit risk management. The second kind of credit risk is counterparty default risk. In counterparty default risk, remember that banks do a lot of trading. Okay, They trade in money market securities like treasury bills, commercial paper, certificates of deposits. They undertake repo transactions in the money markets as well. The banks are also extensively trading with counterparties in foreign exchange, dealing in millions of dollars of foreign exchange trades with counterparties across the world because the FX market is a global market. The credit risk could also be because of fixed income trading, that is bond trading. Banks participate in these three trades every day, day in and day out, that is money market securities, foreign exchange securities, bond trading, etc. They also take part in OTC derivatives. So thus, the bank's treasury department and the dealing room is extensively exposed to different kinds of trades with different types of counterparties. A credit risk arises if the counterparty has failed to deliver. This is called as FTD trade, that is a failed to deliver trade. Bank has cleared the trade, that is bank has done the pay in for the trade, but the counterparty has failed to clear the trade and they have not done the pay in. So if one of the parties makes the pay in for the trade but the other counterparty fails to do so, we call this as a settlement failure because one has agreed and delivered, the other has agreed but not delivered. Okay. So credit risk, let's take an example. Hari Bank has bought treasury bills from KH Bank. Okay. This means that Hari Bank has to make the payment to KH Bank which it does within the settlement cycle of T plus 1 or T plus 2, depending on which market it has done the trade. And it has made the payment to KH Bank. KH Bank has received the payment. Okay, But KH Bank does not deliver the treasury bills of the trade. So as a seller of the asset, KH Bank's responsibility to deliver the securities is very high. But it does not deliver the treasury bills. Hari Bank is exposed to cash outflow because it has made the payment plus it has not received the trade for or for trading in further cycles. This means that Hari Bank is exposed to credit risk which is on the nature of counterparty default. One of the counterparties has failed to deliver. This is the monetary and opportunity loss for the counterparty which has made the payment, which has made the delivery. And the counterparty has failed to clear in these cases. This is called as a settlement failure and banks therefore always take pre-trade approvals before entering into trades in foreign exchange, money markets, derivatives and bond trades with other counterparties. Let's now take a look at market risk. As we just discussed, banks extensively trade in treasury bills, bonds, foreign exchange, derivatives, etc. The prices of these assets are extremely volatile. Okay, The fluctuations in the prices could result into significant losses for the bank if the trading position is on the wrong side. Banks take trading positions in government securities, bonds and foreign exchange and therefore banks are by the nature of this trading activity exposed to what is called as market risk. The market risk, if the prices decrease, the long positions suffer a loss. Correct? So you have bought, let's say, USD against INR and the price of base currency USD decreases and you're long on USD, that means you're incurring a loss. 
If prices increase, the short position suffer the loss because banks are large financial institutions. They are also allowed to take trading positions on the short side. But the, they've taken a short, they've, they shorted a trade, they shorted an asset and the prices have increased. Therefore, they will suffer a loss. The market risk is the risk that the entire portfolio of the bank suffers a loss. Obviously, it's not going to go down to zero because there is so much of classifications of bank securities and so on. And there are severely strict banking guidelines given by central banks across the world as to how they should be able to manage their portfolio. All that is complied with. So therefore, market risk is that the risk of maximum loss that the bank will suffer if an overnight position goes haywire. The third kind of risk was an outcome of the global financial crisis of 2007-2008 called as liquidity risk. Liquidity is the ability to make timely obligatory payments. Obligatory means we have to make that payment on that date. Okay, So it's not just making a payment within a cycle or something, but it is making a payment on a specific date. Bank must make scheduled payments on time because we trust the bank to do that. All of us put money into banks that we trust, that are, you know, that we have a complete faith in. That is, when we go to the ATM or when we enable NEFT transfers, the payments will go off. So, therefore, banks must make scheduled payments on time. For example, interest payment to depositors. If depositor wants to withdraw the money, the bank should be having the money to be able to pay the client that. Banks, therefore, have to be liquid enough to make these timely payments. Therefore, because we keep talking about timely, timely, timely in the case of liquidity, we call liquidity in two formats, in two durations, in the case of short-term liquidity, which is the ability of the bank to meet cash outflows over the next 30 days. Okay? Whereas long-term liquidity is the liquidity of the bank the ability of the bank to make cash outflows over the next 360 days. Okay, so since timely payments is such a strong essence for liquidity mapping, we call them as short term liquidity as well as long term liquidity. Finally, operational risk is the risk that there are poor processes, human errors and negligence, an inadequate system causing the bank to suffer a loss either because of loss of data, because of a payment that has erroneously gone to a wrong party, because of fraud conducted by the employees themselves. For all of this, there has to be a robust systems in place. There has to be continuous audit of the bank, of the bank as well as the employees so that these errors will not be, will, will be easily detected and they can be uh, rectified as quickly as possible. Thank you so much for listening into this video. Have a great day.